Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about how to afford luxury when you're a student. I'm a student myself and I use all of these tips and tricks to be able to afford some luxury goods for myself. So I hope this video is really informative and helpful for some of you that maybe want to try and afford your first luxury handbag. I hope you stick around for the video. Um, in the first part I will talk about how to get a source of income and what jobs you can do depending on your age of course. Then I will talk about eliminating unnecessary expenses to have some more money to put towards your dream bag. And in the third part I will talk about setting realistic goals and sticking to them. So um, of course to get a source of income depends on your age and also on your location and your abilities. If you're a high school student for example I would just try and go into the city and ask if a local coffee shop or maybe the library or other places need some assistance and if that is not an option for you or maybe your parents don't allow it I would suggest doing some handiwork around the house so you could clean the window, sweep the driveway, mow the lawn for example and ask for some pocket money in return and you could also do that with your neighbors or other people you might know. If you're older and you're a college student you of course have more possibilities. The first thing I would suggest is to get a student's job at a company or to get a summer job. Big companies here in Germany for example offer these jobs and they pay really good money because you're working shift and and yeah, you can save up a lot of money and put it towards something more expensive you might like. Also, of course, you can just get a normal job in retail or maybe the food industry where you can also get tip money. Also, you can get a normal job, of course, and work during the weekends and after classes. And I would also suggest applying for tutoring jobs at your university and also give tutoring lessons to children, depending on your major, of course. But languages are always sought after or if you're really good in math, that is really something you can do and try and help children with, which is also a really nice way to get some extra money in. Another kind of way to get money is to ask for money for Christmas, for example. So instead of people giving you gifts you maybe don't don't need that much you can ask for a gift card and maybe some money to put towards your back you really want and then the number one tip I have for you guys is work while you can especially when you're a student it doesn't really matter if you're in school or in college but I know we have exam season and there we won't have that much time to be able to work so I would suggest working during longer breaks and working during the weekends and use your time more wisely. So instead of going out like every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, maybe try and save a Friday for the shifts at the restaurant you're working at and just going out Saturday and Sunday so you will save a lot of money in the long run. Alright, and that brings us to topic number two, which is eliminating unnecessary expenses. This of course also depends on the person, so you probably know best what you spend your money on. And if you don't, I would suggest writing down every expense you have in a week or in a month and then categorizing these expenses. So if you go to Starbucks every day or if you grab lunch at the bakery every day, that goes into the category food. And then if you t uh, take an Uber every day or a taxi or I don't know, then that goes in the category transportation and so on and so on. And the first thing I'm guilty of spending a lot of money is eating out. And I know it could be tempting because it saves a lot of time and it's usually really yummy but it also costs so much money and you save so much by eating in and just cooking at home. Um, it's also usually more healthy. So what I did and what I would suggest you guys trying is not grabbing something on the way home, but trying to always make a social event out of eating out. So I will only go and eat out with my boyfriend or my friends or my family. I will never get something to eat by myself and that's 
worked really well for me and it saved me so much money and also I feel like eating out should be something special and it shouldn't be something you do like every other day but it should stay something that you're looking forward to and that you're excited for and kind of to go along the same lines is to always bring a bottle of water with you and preferably also a snack so you don't have to buy these things in a vending machine because that's usually also quite more expensive than just getting it at the supermarket and having it in your bag. Also the second major major point I think we all spend much money on is shopping and there I have a couple of tips and tricks for you to eliminate unnecessary shopping expenses. The first one is to never buy something just because it's on sale because usually these items are not something you really really want but you just buy them because they're cheap and that's not really the best reason to buy something because you will not like it as much. If you love the item then go for it definitely but if it's just something you say oh it's only like five or ten euros I'll just like grab it I don't think that's a good reason to buy something. And along the same lines don't buy something just because your size is not available. I would always wait until your size comes back in stock because I feel like buying something that is not in your size and that doesn't fit you perfectly is just such a waste of money. And then going to the tailor is more and more expensive again. So if it's something you can live without, maybe try and find an alternative to that item or wait until it comes back in stock or it will probably not be such a big deal after one or two weeks so you will probably forget about that thing so I would only buy things that fit you properly and then something I try not to do is buy into trends because these can get old after only a couple of weeks and yeah sometimes these items are more expensive just because they're on trend and usually the trend items are much more statement and you cannot wear them over and over again because people would notice that you wear the same item all the time so I would try and stick to neutrals because if you're wearing a bright orange sweater people know if you wore it like three times in a row but if you just wear like a basic white long sleeve um, I don't think people would notice that you wear it three times in a row because it's just so basic so I feel like that is a better option so stick to neutrals and to classics that you can wear over and over again and get your wear out of them and to go with your neutral outfits I would try and buy more into accessories, so jewelry, maybe some nice headbands, maybe some cute shoes or a bag and pimp your outfit with these accessories because accessories are usually a lot less expensive and it also gives you a different kind of look that you would achieve with some other trend items. So that also saves you money in the long run. And the next tip would be to buy clothing secondhand because first of all they're really unique and you will not walk around with the same shirt that everyone else is wearing and also they're a lot cheaper and also it's good for the environment so I would recommend trying out the secondhand route if you need something and then if you can't find it you can still buy it new but I think secondhand shopping is a great option the next really expensive sector in my life is beauty and skincare and I'm quite good with spending money on beauty products products now because I only buy things that are empty so if I need a new foundation I will rebuy that and I always try to stick to the things that I really like and the same with uh, skincare because I feel like we buy so many things just to try them out and then we don't like them and throw them out and that's such a waste of money so I always try to find things that work for me and then rebuy those and if you don't have things that work for you yet then I would um, try and look up some reviews on the internet or ask your friends about them or maybe go to a store and ask the sale go to a store and ask the salesperson if they can help you um, maybe match your skin and things like that so you know what um, works with your skin and uh, what items are the best for you specifically and let's be honest we don't need the 10th red lipstick because 
nobody will notice that it's a slightly different shade and it's such a waste of money so try and have some staple items and try to play around with them and be creative and not to like hoard and buy masses and masses of makeup because it's just not worth it and it just goes bad after a couple of years and you just have to throw it out. The last thing I think we can all save a lot of money on is going clubbing or going out because you need to pay entrance, you need to pay for the really overpriced drinks, you also sometimes need to get a new outfit or new lashes and things like that and those things can really add up. Also the taxi on the way home, so expensive. So I would recommend just maybe like the eating out thing. Going clubbing shouldn't be like a every weekend kind of thing, but it should be something yeah, special and exciting and if somebody celebrates their birthday and things like that, I feel like clubbing is something good to do, but I don't feel like it's a necessary thing to do every weekend, so I cut back on that tremendously and I only go clubbing a couple of times a year and that saves me so much money. All right, and the third part I wanna talk about is to set yourself a realistic goal and stick to that goal. If you don't know how much money you have left over each month or if you don't have money left over each month, I would suggest you budgeting everything out that you have coming in of your bank account and coming out of your bank account every month. So take a piece of paper and add up everything that you have coming in. So all of your income should be on one side added up and then you have to subtract everything that is necessary. So your rent, your gas, your water bill, things like that you have to pay and then subtract that. And that, what is left over, should be a substantial amount of your money, so it shouldn't be less than 50%, it should even be a little more than 50% of your income. If that's not the case, maybe try and work a little more because you should really have more than 50% of your income left over after your running expenses and then I would put half of that money you have left over towards your savings because it's always so important to have money saved up in case of a crisis like corona for example. I know a lot of people don't have a financial safety net yeah and that's really not something you should postpone but it's something you should focus on before you are able to afford luxury goods or that new car you want or that expensive holiday you want to go on, I would always try and have a couple of hundred euros on the side so you could live like one or two months off of that money in case something bad happens and in case your income is frozen for a couple of weeks. And then um, with the rest of the money you have, once you put the necessary expenses and the saving out of the way, that is your money to spend. And I would also recommend seeing what you do in a month and putting that money away for like your social events. So everything like going to the cinema, going to the restaurant, maybe if you need like a new um, collar supplies and things like that, I would put aside a little bit of money for that. And then the rest of that is free to get your bag. So I would look at that number and let's say it's 100 euros a month. 100 euros a month to spend on a luxury bag. We all know that luxury bags are quite expensive, so set yourself a realistic goal because with 100 euros a month, you will not be able to afford a Chanel Classic Flap handbag because this handbag is 5,000 euros new and you would need over four years to get that handbag. And um, after these four years, the handbag has probably rise to like 6,500 euros. So I would set myself a goal that is attainable for your budget. For example, with 100 euros, I would maybe um, strive for the Pochette Felici that I showed in my last video. This handbag is 740 euros. So you would need around eight months to get the money for that handbag. And that's a realistic goal. 
and maybe it's your birthday in between and you get like 200 euros from your grandma then that's great and you have your handbag way earlier and that's what I mean with setting realistic goals because for example in my age and the place I am in right now I don't have the means to spend uh, 5,000 euros on a handbag. I don't have the means to spend 5,000 euros anywhere. That's just not in my budget. So I know that and that's never something I would attain right now. Um, I will try and postpone that to when I'm older and have a bigger income as I have right now. But for me, that's just not an option right now. And you should know yourself and should know what kind of goal you have and try and follow through with that goal. And my last point is to not buy something just because it's cheaper than the actual item you want. For example, if you really want that pochette Felici now and you already saved up for four months and you have 400 euros saved up and then you go to the outlet mall and see a really cute coach bag, don't buy it because it will not make you happy. Only the item that you really want will make you happy. And so I would just like try and push that aside and say, no, I, I want that Louis Vuitton tone bag so I'm gonna get that one and don't spend the money elsewhere um, because you will always want that original item so there you have it guys these are my tips on how to afford luxury goods when you're a student if you have some tips then leave them down below and we can chat about your tips as well and thank you so much for watching that video I hope you found it informative and helpful and if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe for my channel for more videos I will upload really regularly right now and I hope you stay tuned for the next one bye bye